break it down. I mean, we're talking about a pretty significant tax for recreational marijuana versus, say, medical marijuana mm -hmm. in Colorado. If I go up and I try and buy some marijuana at a dispensary in Colorado, I am going to pay 25% more mm -hmm. or a 25% tax uh, for recreational. Yeah, well, part of it is this tradition that people, you don't pay taxes on your medicine, right? Part mm -hmm. of it is the fact that they're probably going to get tighter on who can get a me medical marijuana recommendation. But I'll tell you, Trish, I think we're going through a transition here. It's like when we repealed alcohol prohibition, the bootleggers didn't just go away in 1933. They held on. They had the distribution networks. They tried to undercut the legal sales with their tax revenue. But over time, they basically got pushed to the side. But this is why it's important, however, as we go through this transition, that government recognize there's sort of a happy medium. In other words, you can tax this, you want to tax it, and you certainly uh, want to tax it to help maybe dissuade people from using this or using too much of it. However, don't overtax it because the minute you overtax it, you run the risk that you drive a trade back underground. Uh, I mean, well, you don't drive it back underground. You prevent it from coming back above ground, right? But I think the key here is, look. But the idea when, is that it's not supposed to be underground. One reason right people now, voted for this was because they wanted the tax revenue to go for school construction and drug treatment, yes. things like that, right? And they've gotten some money for and that. And they've gotten some money for that. The fact of the matter is, the state will probably get about $100 million this year from tax revenue. Mm -hmm. More and more people are generally willing to pay a slight premium in order to get it from a legal source. Remember also, so far, only a limited number of outlets have opened up. You get to That's the end right. of this year, and there are hundreds of outlets selling legally. People can go around the corner. They know what they're getting. The people are above ground. A lot of people, given a choice between saying $100 for illegal or $120, $130 for legal, will probably go the legal way. Look, um, you know, I've told you this before. I've actually never tried marijuana and really don't have any interest uh. in doing it. However, here's the thing. If I were, and I had a choice between going and getting a medical supply of marijuana versus the recreational supply, and, you know, I, I like a bargain like anyone else, do I really want to pay 25% more for pot when I can just go get a medical card and pay that much less? Well, the question will be, will it be easy for you to get a medical marijuana card in Colorado? Let's remember, California is one thing where almost anybody can get it for almost any medical condition. Colorado was tighter and the other states are tighter still. So it's not like anybody can just walk in the door and say, Doc, I got a hangnail, give me a medical marijuana recommendation. It's going to be tougher. The number of people who can get it medically is going to shrink, I believe, compared really? to the numbers. I mean, what makes you think it's going to be tougher? Because right now, it's a pretty good business for a doctor out well, there. Remember also, well, remember, there's state regulations. There's certain medical conditions mm -hmm. that need to be approved. And yeah. if you look at the other states outside Colorado and California, some of these states are very strict. So we're going to be legalizing marijuana in years to come for recreational purposes, where the medical community is relatively a small proportion of the overall market. Okay, so, but then this just brings us back to, if you have such heavy taxes on recreational recreational use uh, and it's difficult to get a medical card, why not then go to the, uh, the local non-legit supplier and get a non-legitimate source of marijuana? I mean, are, is Colorado running the risk that it's taxing too much? I think what's going to happen, the people who are currently happy with their illegal marijuana dealer and happy with the price and the quality they're getting. They're going to stick with it's it? It's going to be harder for them to switch to the legal. The legal is going to have to compete with them. But for a whole lot of people who I mean, want to obey you, the law... Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you don't want to run that risk that you know no, someone's going to... This is a transition. In a couple years from now, the Colorado State Legislature can conclude that the tax is too high and they can lower it. There's flexibility built into this thing. It may not happen this year, but it will happen soon enough. I'll bet you this, Trish, five yeah. years from now, overwhelmingly, 90% of all Colorado marijuana consumers are going to be getting it either from home growing their own mm -hmm. or from a legal source. And that illegal supply side is going to be a negligible part. What of about the Washington? Fire. Washington's Washington State may be tougher because the tax is even higher there. They did it like they took a cut of the wholesale, cut of distribution, cut of retail. In Oregon and Alaska, which will probably be the ones that go this year, there we're going to see a tax that's more modest. There's going to be flack from the other side, from the public health side, who want a high tax. Yeah. One way or another, we're going to work this out, and I bet you most people are going to be buying yeah, the marijuana. Well, it sounds that uh, legalization is here to stay. Ethan Nadelman, thank you so much.